This is what Japanese people really order at a sushi restaurant. So I'm here in Tokyo's Harajuku area in front of Kura Sushi, one of Japan's largest sushi restaurant chains. And today I'm going to take you inside to show you what Japanese people really order at a Kaiten Sushi restaurant, aka conveyor belt sushi, just in case you wanted to order it for yourself. Luckily the kind people at Kura Sushi have given me permission to film today. Oh and Michael and Wolfie will be joining for this one because they want to be part of the show. Before we start, if you guys want to help support the channel, check out the Japan merch. And if you guys have any questions about Japan or your Japan travels, check out my Discord community. All right, let's get our sushi on. So today's lovely sushi spot is Kura Sushi, located on the fourth floor of YM Squared, less than a minute walk from Harajuku Intersection's shiny Tokyo Plaza. And if you ever found yourself at a place like this, not knowing what to order or sticking to the same sushi order every time, well, hopefully I can help inspire you to try something new in your next visit by showing what sushi Japanese really order. Speaking of which, Japanese say Kura Sushi instead of Kura Sushi. And this Harajuku shop is a bit unique since it runs special themes, currently Demon Slayer, and even has as a crepe stand. Be warned though, it's popular so it's best to make reservations if you don't want to wait in line. Oh, and if you're on that Jason Derulo tip and ride in solo, they've got single counter seats. Otherwise, you can table it or go private room, which we're in today. Okay, so here we are, ready to eat. Got Maiko and Wolfie right here. Let me show you what Japanese people really order. So first of all, one of the things that's really popular in Japan these days is having a little display like this where you order and everything comes down the line automatically. Before in the past, you would order directly to the chef, but now everything is so speedy and just comes down the lane. So one thing you guys need to know before we start this whole sushi adventure is how Japanese people will use their soy sauce, which is kind of important if you don't want to seem, I guess, rude or, or whatnot. But, so basically what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take your soy sauce, maybe like two to three drips, so do that real quick, one, oh, it's a little bit more, but that works. And then you take your wasabi, sometimes you'll get it in like a little tray, but this one comes in these little packets, and then you kind of just put it on top as you like, just like this, and there you go. Number one, albacore tuna, bincho maguro. This is the first thing you should try if you haven't tried it before, which is my personal favorite, it's my go-to, is the bean maguro. If my sushi go-to had a go-to, this would be it. Most people go with a standard red tuna or fatty tuna, but they're missing out on this popular Japanese hitter. It's very similar to the maguro, to the tuna that you probably eat. You can just see it's a little bit wider than your regular tuna, and it's just so much softer and buttery. Let's just do it properly, drop a few drops here, Boom, up, oh, there we go. Drop there. Ah, oh, there we go. We're gonna have this. That is so buttery smooth. The thing that I love about this the most is that it's relatively expensive compared to the maguro or other dishes. This one is rather cheap, so if you're looking to fill up and just get something that's buttery, buttery soft, then yes, start with this one. Number two, conger eel. Anago. So quickly, I know that a lot of people are familiar with unagi, which is a freshwater eel. But in Japan, what's actually also popular is anago, and it is a saltwater eel. These days, for some reason, I've actually started liking anago a little better. Unagi is usually paired with a sweet sauce and definitely a lot fatter, while anago is a lighter and more sophisticated brother from another mother, but at a fraction of the price. Mm. Wow, that is so tender. And of course, Wolfie likes Anago too. Here, you want some Anago, Wolfie? There you go. See, he loves it. Number three, marinated sushi. So moving on to the next one, marinated sushi. And I've got the kind of trifecta here. Really depends on the place you go. But Japanese people really like getting sushi that's been marinated. Let me show you. So we have three plates right here. This one is like a kind of more standard one, which is the zuke maguro. So basically, zuke means that they take the fish and they put it into the marinade, which is usually like soy sauce, miri, sake, or whatever. Yeah, just to add a little bit of sweetness and flavor 
flavor to it. Probably find this a lot in restaurants, but this one is a little bit similar to it. This, so this one is Kampachi. I guess it's called Great Amberjack. And this is Kobujime. This one uses a different technique from Zuke as it's flavored with kombu seaweed, helping elevate the fish's natural flavor. There are many different marinades enhancing various sushi. So why not take a dip in this umami rich Japanese soak? Let's try this one because it's a little bit different. This one actually tastes like it has kind of like a sake kasu. And this one here is marinated in kombu. Mm. Well, it's beautiful because you don't even need any soy sauce and it already has all the flavor built in. And when you do zuke, what's nice about it is that even if you have like a drier fish, it makes it more moist and adds a little bit more tenderness. And overall, it changes the taste profile and makes it super delicious, makes it more tender, soft. So definitely try it. Number four, squid with shiso. So next one you guys should know is the squid, which is ika. This might be something that a lot of people may or may not order overseas. Here in Japan, it's quite popular for Japanese people to order. And a lot of the times you can order it with shiso like this. Kind of gives it a nice fresh herb taste. And instead of putting soy sauce, which you can do, a lot of people will also put salt on it. So let's just put our salt on like this. And another thing, I mean, you can eat it with your, obviously your chopsticks, but a lot of Japanese people will just eat it with their hands. So there you go. Mm. That is perfect. So one of the differences with Ika in Japan is that it's usually served really fresh. So sometimes you order squid and it's really, really chewy, but generally what you'll find is that it's super, super tender in Japan and definitely worth ordering. I'm seriously hoping that when you guys watch this video and you come to Japan or if you're already in Japan, you try some of these out. Let me know what you guys tried out. You can message me on Instagram or you can tag me on Instagram and let me know because that's what it's all about. Coming to Japan and experiencing new things, trying new things and I'm here to help you out. Number five, clams. Moving on to the shellfish. This is Akagai and this is Tsubugai. Akagai is just a little bit more red while the Tsubugai is a little bit more white. This is another popular Japanese go-to. Really there's so many different types of the shellfish that you can order, but these two are kind of the basic ones. What I like about it and I think what a lot of Japanese people like about it is that it just gives you a different flavor profile. It has a unique texture compared to say tuna or salmon. It has more of like a, a crunchy, slithery taste to it. And this is the super guy. Definitely has a crunchier texture than the Hakka guy. If it were me, I think for me, I think I prefer that super guy. I just like the, you know, just the difference, getting like a whole new taste experience. Mm. Number six, the creative Gunkan, aka the mothership. These battle-tested sushi are known for their toppings wrapped around with nori seaweed, aptly called Gunkan, for their battleship-like appearance, and are often found at conveyor belt sushi spots. Maguro UK. Now this one is also one of my favorites. It has a lot of interesting things going on in this one little sushi dish. Basically, you have kind of like a minced tuna and you have some onions on top and then you also have egg. It's like the egg yolk, but it's raw egg and then sometimes onsen tamago where it's kind of like half cooked. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. Let's just have this. Look at this beautiful guy, look at that. got this really really nice and kind of minced tuna the egg itself as you can see is super soft so on top of that you know Japan has all these like, creative dishes I wanted to show you this one because it's worth an honorable mention it is the okura and squid so the okura itself is kind of like a little bit slimy a little bit gooey then you have the squid that's kind of like chopped up and mixed in definitely worth a try if you don't like sliminess and this is probably not your thing but if you want to get a little a little bit more experimental then this one is worth a try mm. there's a strong like kind of vinegar taste to this one as well so before we continue on, I want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. If you all don't already know, Squarespace is the number one way to build your online presence. In fact, I use Squarespace for my website, Tokyo Zebra. Here are just some of the reasons why I love using Squarespace so much. Now with Fluid Engine, their next generation website design system, it helps anyone unlock their creativity with reimagined drag and drop technology for desktop or mobile. And start with their professional website templates, but then customize it like I did for my website to fit your 
own needs, check out my homepage that shows my latest video for both my channels. If you want to sell products online, physical, digital, or service products, Squarespace has you covered. Sell custom merch? Squarespace has you covered. Want to accept online appointments? Guess what? Squarespace also has you covered. So there you go. Go to squarespace.com today for your free trial. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Paolo from Tokyo and get 10% off your first domain or website. Number 7. Tuna and Pickled Radish Roll So the next is a Toro Taku, which is this beauty right here. It's basically tuna and it has taku on, which is a pickled daikon. That's why it's turned a little bit yellow. Um, it's wrapped in rice and seaweed and it's something that you probably may not try, but definitely worth trying. I'm just going to put some soy sauce on here real quick. Let's just do this all in one go. Bam! Oh, that's a sweet one. They do have a sweet soy sauce here, but it's actually not one of my favorites. Down with the regular soy sauce, and this one is actually reduced salt. So let's just throw it. Bam, bam, bam. Mm. Wow, that is a huge piece of tuna. I love how the tuna pairs so well with the takuan. It has a nice crunchy texture. It just gives it an overall different taste experience. I love doing this. I love showing you guys these places, things to do. This is perfect. What a day. Thank you. Whoa. Yeah, that's so fast. Number eight, fried chicken cartilage. So another thing that Japanese like to order is fried foods at sushi restaurants. And one of the favorites is the nankotsu karage. I know that a lot of you are familiar with karage fried chicken, which, you know, is one of my personal favorites. But they also have fried cartilage, which is this. You take a little bit of the lemon, you sprinkle it on. And I'm not sure if this is popular in the rest of the world, but in Japan, it is definitely popular. Little balls of fried cartilage. Mmm, that is so crunchy and delicious. Little bite size pieces of crunchy heaven. This is probably another one of my favorites. Usually, if we go to a place, I will probably order two one for just myself and then one for everyone else. And number nine, ramen and udon. So with the help of Wolfie, we have our ramen dish. Now, one thing about sushi kaiten restaurants is that a lot of them offer noodles. So if you have someone that doesn't actually like sushi and they want to order something else, they offer that as well. If they offer noodles, it's mainly udon, but so then some places like this place are starting to offer more noodle dishes like ramen and there's some onions, chashu, and it just smells so good. Let's just taste that. This dashi is amazing. Apparently they make the dashi all from scratch and that is just so flavorful. The umami is so strong. Then the noodles are actually a little bit thicker than normal so I think kids will like this one as well. Mm. And that's a good chashu as well. That was a flavor explosion. This place was nice is that you get little balls for putting your plates into the little slot right here. But five of them in there, you get to win a prize or hopefully you get to win a prize. One of the reasons why I love this spot is the fun little mini game you can play when returning your plates, Bikura Pon. If you're a parent, you definitely know that entertaining your kids while you eat is always a challenge. So this fun activity is very appreciated. Nice, he won something. Two, three. <laughs> you got tea? So one thing I want to quickly mention about this place, since we are in Harajuku, it's like one of the crepe capitals of Japan. This shop also offers crepes. They use special machines to make these colorful crepes, which Wolfie loved to watch. It's not often you get to see this in a sushi shop, so it's a fun treat. Maybe not something that Japanese people order, but something that's fun regardless. You want some of this? Look at this. Oh, that is a great crepe. Cream filling, it has a custard right there. Some of the strawberry topping cream, custard, soft, soft crepe. Mm. Look at Whoopi, he got some more stuff. What'd you get, Whoopi? 
and their mango soft cream is popping. I mean, literally, there's something popping when you eat it. It's pretty dope. Is it good? All right, so that concludes the video. If you liked it, help us out and hit that like button. If you guys want to see more videos like this or anything related to Japan, hit that subscribe button and the bell button, and we'll catch you guys in the next one.